Hello friends and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz from Sassy's LLC and I have a fun light up card with this magical fairy tale scene to share with you today. When you push the button, we're using twinkle lights and so they light up and sort of blink and add to that magical swirl that's happening in the background and I cannot wait to share this with you. So the star of the show for this card is really the twinkle lights. These are from Pear Blossom Press. They're super easy to use. I'd never used them before and I was just thrilled with them. And then this press stamp set for the word press that we're going to stamp on our book. This is the large die of the month from Spellbinders for July 2024. And these birds reminded me of like old school fairy tale movies and they really inspired this card. So I thought I would also grab this classic tales die set. It's a former large die of the month. It's still available, but I just wanted the books really. And then a pumpkin, right? So this is Autumn Wonder also from Spellbinders. We're going to start by assembling our book dies and these come together super easily. Um, and actually, I end up putting four together and only using three of them. I love this open book, right? That to me is like we're opening the book and letting all of the magic come out. I'm an English teacher. This was like I lost my mind a little bit <laughs> getting excited about this one. Um, but there are other companies that make book dies that would work beautifully here. Waffle Flower in particular has some that are about the same size. They just have kind of a different look and feel to them. So I'll link options for you below. I am adding my glue all over the back of the top piece of the book. I'm gonna be gluing these on to silver foil cardstock and it's kind of slick and the glue can get weird. So I just let that glue dry and get really tacky for a minute. And then I put it down on the foil cardstock and that's a little bit easier. There is a piece that goes inside that big oval, but we'll do that at the end for our button. So again, you can see there is a third book on that stack before we get to the open book. Um, we're not gonna end up using that, but there are three options for closed books in that die set. These birds, they are whimsical and kind of quirky. There's a little um, crown that goes on the top. I think they're supposed to be cardinals. You could easily turn them into blue jays, but I'm just gonna leave off the top part to make them any old bird, sort of a cartoony bird. So I made mine in pink, which I really love. There's a particular movie I'm thinking of as I'm assembling this one. And there's a lot of pink in one of the scenes that the birds are in where they're assembling stuff with a bow and some fabric. And so that really fit here for me. Um, I'm adding the legs on, and I think for both of these birds, if I was gonna make these again, I would wait to add the legs until I know where they're going on my card. Because if the bird is flying, I either want no legs or the legs tucked like way up underneath them, where this second bird that I'm putting together, I left those legs hanging down quite a bit. We're, we're gonna fix it, I promise. But something to be aware of if you do have this die set and are assembling them. You wouldn't have to use these birds, right? There's tons of stamp sets that would work for this where the birds are similar in size. Most of the bird die sets I have, the birds are quite a bit bigger. So I really liked the size of them for this so that they're not taking over the entire front of the card. So here I am kind of adding those legs and you can see when I go to pick this up, those legs would work if the bird was standing on something, but it's a little wonky later on. This pumpkin comes from Autumn Wonder and actually it's maybe a little big, a smaller one would have worked nicely, but I love that little swirl. So I did the top of the pumpkin and that swirly viney bit um, out of some matte gold cardstock just to add to the magic of it all. We're gonna keep the background fairly simple because I don't have a stamp for a magical swirl. Um, so we're gonna do that by hand. So just around the edges of some light blue cardstock, I'm adding a little bit of teal ink and then a little violet ink just to create that vignette, right? That feeling that kind of comes with those old cartoon movies where it's sort of lighter in the middle and darker around the edges. I've been playing with where everything's gonna go so I can add my swirl and I am just doing a loop-de-loop -loop and then I'm gonna come back in and add a second loop very carefully. I know it's hard to see, but I need to erase that pencil line in a minute. So I wanted it to be as light as possible. 
My friends, I am not an artist. I was sure I was gonna end up doing this three or four times, but honestly, it was easier than I thought. So I have a Signo silver pen, right? Like a metallic pen. And I am just dotting on either side of that line all the way around just to keep track of it. Some people might be able to sort of eyeball that entire loop-de-loop. -loop. I cannot. I would totally lose my place and forget where I was. So once I have dots on either side of the line, I can go in and erase that line right? And now I'm going in and I'm adding little stars that are just like where you cross it three times. Again, I know it's hard to see. I'll lift it up so you can see it here. I have some thicker spots and some thinner spots. I love that. There are some stars that I don't love. We're going to cover them up. These are teeny, teeny, tiny holographic star embellishments that I've had in my stash for ages. I don't know where they came from, but I will link to some from Trinity that have similar stars. They're mostly a little bigger, but some of the smallest ones are pretty close. Or you could use really tiny rhinestones here. At the very end, I'll put a few rhinestones on before I show you like the final finished card. But I just wanted a little more texture, something that would have some extra shine and catch the light a little bit differently. And then that part is done. I'm going to start adding my books starting at the bottom and I'm going to glue the first two down, but I have a lot of other pieces I'm unsure about. So for the other books, I'm going to use some removable tape runner and this lets me sort of pick them up and move them. It's like a post-it level of adhesive. So when you see me moving these books, that's what's going on, right? They're tacked down very, very lightly. I originally thought I was going to stack three closed and then open but I wanted more space for that swirl. That's where our lights are gonna be. That's where the birds are gonna be. The pumpkin right in the middle was covering up too much. So I removed that other book and now I'm bringing in the trees and I'm trying to decide what layout I want. They aren't gonna be perfectly symmetrical, but I am gonna kind of mirror what I did with the same pieces. That way I don't have to figure it out twice. I have cut everything from matte silver and matte gold cardstock. And for these trees on those thin little branches, I just add little lines of glue and then I tap it off on the back of my hand. But you could use scratch paper or a silicone mat, anything like that, just to remove glue that might ooze out. I don't want to make a mess. There is some ink back there. It is water reactive. Um, and I really don't like it when it starts to change color from my glue. Sometimes when I'm assembling backgrounds like this, I will lay everything out and then pick it up with a clear sticky mat, add glue, and then lay it right back down in the corner of my card. I tell you what, guys, I can't find my sticky mat. <laughs> so we're winging it, but there are trees and it's organic. And I was like, it's going to be fine. I tried to put the trunks of the trees as far to the outside of the card as I possibly could. Again, I'm just leaving as much room as possible in the middle for our scene. I'll add all of that on with wet glue. On the right hand side, again, I'm doing pretty much the same thing. And then I'll just take my scissors and I will trim off the excess and I will have my clean sort of A2 panel. There's just a hint of those trees in the top corners. If you have a different set of book dies or book stamps, you could leave that off, right? Um, I don't know that it was necessary, but I had it and half of these pieces were already cut and just hanging out on the package. So that finishes off the trees. And now I can start figuring out the placement of everything else and adding in my lights. I'm bringing in a foam mat to stick behind there. And then I'm using my pokey tool, the same one that has that wax pickup stick on the other end. Mine's from Trinity, but any piercing tool would work here. And I am just poking that through three different places where I already had a mark in my magical swirl. And on one of them, I'm even removing that holographic star um, because it was the perfect place and I'm reclaiming it for a light. I will then flip this over and I'm going to get out my twinkle light. This is it. The mechanism is super simple. I just add my battery in there and then I press the button and the lights light up. The one tricky piece about this card is that I want the battery pack on my card base and the lights on that blue panel. So I am trying to figure out where I want that button, right in the middle of that book. That's where we'll put push. And I'm adding a pencil mark onto my card base. This is just a folded A2 card base. And then I like to trace around the outside of it 
just to help myself make sure I get it right back in the same spot. Then I can flip this over and I'm gonna add my twinkle lights. I am going to look for the yellow part that is the light. It faces a particular direction and I want that right up against the holes that I've poked. I'm coming back in with my piercing tool just to make those holes a little bit bigger to give myself a little more space for that light to really shine. And then I'm gonna lay one of those lights on there. It's connected to two wires and I'm just taping it on there with scotch tape, right? Making sure that the yellow part is facing the hole. I'll do that with all three and then I will go ahead and add my battery pack to the card base. Okay, so I'm double checking. Every time I make a card like this, I'm constantly checking the mechanism, making sure I didn't mess anything up. I'm using two pieces of quarter inch double stick tape. I like score tape for this. And I'm gonna adhere that to my card base so the button is overlapping that pencil mark. Then I can add my foam tape. This is the world's best foam tape from Pear Blossom Press. It is amazing and it is ideal for this job. I need to make sure there's enough room for that battery pack so that the button isn't getting accidentally pressed. If you're using a different tape, make sure you're checking your thickness. But I love this because it's also repositionable for 30 minutes. So if I end up with something on there crooked, I can fix it. So here are the places that I put my foam tape and I've tucked it into the corner of my scoreboard just so that I can make sure I get everything on straight. I'm gonna gently curl my wires and just use scotch tape to add those better onto my blue panel so that I'm not worried about them sticking out when I go to add everything together. I'm gonna to tuck the card base into the top left corner and then I'm gonna tuck the card front in the same corner and it's on there perfectly, right? I have a top folding card base too. So I know that if something needs to be trimmed off, right? If the card base is too big, that's down at the bottom. That's a super easy fix. You guys, I played around for 45 minutes to try to figure out ways to put an actual piece of ribbon on here. And I tell you what, I, <laughs> I've been playing with the Spellbinders clubs all week. And one of the clubs was sitting on my desk, the small die of the month. It has this bow that is perfect. It reminds me so much of the movie, right? And I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out. But I assembled the bow. It goes together really easily. And I'm gonna have my top right bird hanging on to that bow like he's about to go add it to a dress. And then I can add my pumpkin on and my other bird. You guys, we're almost done. So the pumpkin right in the middle, I think for me, sort of solidifies what scene, what sort of story we're telling. So even though I thought the pumpkin was a little big at the beginning, by the time the card is done, I was like, it's the perfect size. <laughs> this is exactly the size that I wanted for this card. I would love to know in the comments below if you've used twinkle lights before. And if you have a favorite of those old classic cartoon fairy tales, um, I don't know if this is my favorite, but it's definitely up there. It's one of the first ones I remember ever watching. So I'm adding a little bit of glue and then I'll tap that off on the back of my hand once again, just to make sure that that glue isn't gonna smear. This one is overlapping at some shiny cardstock and it has a tendency to wanna sort of move around up there. <laughs> so we're avoiding that. Here's my press stamp set. There are little dies back there um, that coordinate with the candle flames and some other things, but I am just gonna use the sort of scripty press and I love how that font really pairs well with this scene. I'm gonna stamp it a couple of times because I was feeling brave this day <laughs> and decided uh, to do some free range stamping. It worked out and then here's that tiny little die from the set that cuts out the center for that bottom book and it says press. I'll add a little bit of glue, remove any of the excess on the back of my hand and then I'm testing it kind of while I'm adding it on there, right? I'm pressing firmly and there go my lights. For a sentiment, these are free printable sentiments. I release these twice a month on my channel and these coordinated with that book die set that came out back in March. And so I have a bunch of like Disney themed, Harry Potter themed, new home, and I'm just using the strip sentiments. They also come in circles and rectangles. So I'm just lining the tick marks up on the blade of my trimmer to make sure that I cut them out straight. And this one has two lines. So we'll use one for the inside 
and one for the outside. Um, there are four fonts available. So I'm using a scripty font that pairs fairly well with that push on there. And it says a card is just a small book and every page says, I love you. If you're interested in that free printable, I will link to it on my channel. I try not to give you lots of hoops to jump through. Like it's, it's free free, my friends. So I have lined this up on a 3 8 inch strip of cardstock. I line up the three sides and then I can just trim off that fourth one depending on which sentiment I'm using and everything has the same margin. I'm adding them with removable adhesive. I just tend to do that with my card so I can change it later if I want to. But certainly you could just glue these down if that's what works better for you. So once that's in there, our card is completely finished. Let's take one last look at it. I'm gonna tilt it in the light here and you can see the shimmer from that silver pen and from the holographic stars. I've added some gems and then our twinkling lights. My friends, I hope that you enjoyed this card. I hope you are inspired to try something magical in your card making. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will see you next time.